Nearly everyone seems to have a cloud-based storage system like iCloud or paid Google Drive. If you're a designer, you likely use cloud-based systems like Figma. For writing for work or school, you might use Google Docs, Google Slides, or even Google Sheets. And that does not have to stop at video. We have seen the rise in cloud-based video editors over the past couple of years. And as a content creator myself, it got me wondering, which kind of editor should I use? cloud-based or traditional. And so to try to figure this out, I experimented with both my traditional video editor, Final Cut Pro, and also edited a video on a cloud-based video editor called Kapwing. I was most interested in figuring out if editing either on the cloud or on a downloadable traditional video editor killed my battery life faster, how much CPU it used on my computer, file sizes and how much storage is needed to create video, how much energy it drains to export content, and ultimately I just wanted to figure out what different benefits traditional versus online video editors have. So if you're interested in my findings, make sure to keep on watching and let's get into this. Okay, so before we get into this, I should tell you all about my computer specs and what different softwares I'll be using. All right, so to edit videos, I am using my MacBook Pro. It is a 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2019. So it's about four years old now. It's not an M1 or M2 chip that now the new Mac laptops seem to have. And it has 16 gigabyte memory. I will have you know that this computer is on its last leg. But I wanted to test this on my older computer because I know a lot of people out there are creating content but don't have the newest and best equipment. So that is what I'm using today. Now firstly, let's talk about some of the benefits of local traditional editors versus online cloud-based editors. So firstly, cloud-based editors offer a bunch of features that make it really useful, especially for people who work on videos together. So because with cloud-based video editors, you are storing all of your footage and projects online, you can create a team and anyone who has access to that team is able to look at any of the projects that are being worked on. So that means if you need to get approvals from a boss or want feedback from a coworker, you can just send them the link. They can hop directly on on their own device and leave comments right within the editor. Secondly, what's nice about cloud-based video editors is that they're trying to make the production workflow much quicker. So they'll often add new tools that make editing faster, like an AI tool that can cut out all the silences in your video in like two clicks, or an automatic subtitler, things like that where they have tools that use new technologies. And thirdly, the cloud is doing all the computing, so you probably don't really need a fancy or high-end computer to edit videos because it's all being processed online, not on your local device. What's also nice about cloud-based video editors is you also have like the entire internet at your disposal. Within the editor, you have a video and image search, so you can go through Google and also stock images uh, online to find assets and B-roll for your content. Instead of having to download them all and then put them within your editor, you just click because it's cloud-based, it's all connected to the internet. But also there are a lot of benefits to these local traditional editors. So number one, if you do have a super high-end computer, you can probably use these traditional video editors super efficiently. Secondly, and this is pretty obvious, but most people learn to edit on these traditional video editors. That's why they are traditional. Number three, traditional editors do not change their tools as often, which can make them a little bit stagnant, but it also makes sure that your experience with them is quite consistent. You probably won't have new features. You probably won't have the features change on you in any way and they probably won't move around within the editor like the UI won't change or anything like that. Whereas these online video editors oftentimes are getting updates um, and adding new things so some things can change a bit. So if this consistency is really important to you and you're working on a really really long form project um, maybe something like a film or even a short film then maybe a traditional editor uh, is the one for you. Now all this being said let's compare directly online versus traditional video editors using the categories I provided. All right, so number one, let's talk battery life. So as I told you, my computer is incredibly old, and so my battery dies incredibly fast. So here's how I compared them. So firstly, I edited a video in Final Cut Pro. I unplugged my computer when I was at 51% battery, and then I edited a video until I reached 1% and documented how long it took. I also was recording the screen at the same time as using these video editors, so that could also contribute to how long it took to drain the battery or how quickly it took to drain the battery rather. But on Final Cut Pro, I went from 51% battery to 1% battery in exactly 40 minutes. So that is about 1.2% battery life every minute using Final Cut Pro. Then I edited practically the same video on Kapwing, which is the online video editor that I was using. And I did the same thing, went from 51% to 1% battery and timed it. And it took exactly 40 minutes 
once again. I was pretty surprised that it took literally the same amount of time to the minute to drain my battery on both of these platforms. Same thing, I was also screen recording throughout, so that also is probably why it went so fast and drained the battery. There was seemingly no difference in battery usage while editing. Secondly, let's talk CPU. If you don't know what CPU is, it's just how much of your computer's power is going towards one specific task. So when using a cloud-based editor, I was actually using Google Chrome in order to edit, of course, because there's no actual like downloaded app on the computer. And so when I opened my CPU usage, Google Chrome had a few different options. It sort of puts it into different buckets on your computer. But all in all, it seemed like Google Chrome, which was mostly kapwing in the cloud-based editor, I have to assume, used about 33 to 37% of the CPU on my computer. Then I did the same thing on Final Cut Pro, and this fluctuated a lot on Final Cut Pro. It went from 40 to 70%. And interestingly, I don't even know how this is possible, it also indicated that it was using above 100% CPU at times. At one point, it literally said it was using 900 185% of my computer CPU, which obviously doesn't make any sense. It was fluctuating quickly. It was at 900, then it was at 700%, then it was at like 200. And overall, it did take more CPU usage than the online video editor, which makes sense because all the processing on the online video editors is happening online and not on your local device. I thought this was interesting because this might help a computer last longer. I think because I have been editing uh, on traditional video editors for a long time on this computer, uh, it's probably been using my CPU heavily for years, and so maybe less CPU usage long term would extend a computer's battery life. Uh, just a hypothesis. Thirdly, let's talk storage. So for the local traditional video editor, obviously for storage you have to put all of the files on your computer, then you have to store the file of the actual project. So Final Cut Pro files can be quite large. And then you also have to export the video and it stays on your computer. Now around the same length of video from Kapwing, it was around a 12 minute video, exported to be around 26 megabytes. Not only this, but you also have compression settings within a lot of online video editors as well, like Kapwing. So when you're exporting, you can say, if you want it to be a smaller or larger file on sort of this scale. Whereas at least on Final Cut Pro, that does not have a compressor within it. You'd have to go online to find a compressor. Um, so if you like that tool, an online video editor might help you compress quickly. Lastly, we can talk about how much energy it takes to export a video uh, locally versus online. So on Final Cut Pro, I exported around a 12 minute video. It exported in around five minutes, but it did drain around 7% of my battery life. With an online editor, it's kind of harder to compare because you are able to click the export button and then you can just X out completely uh, from the editor because everything's processing online so you don't even have to keep it open. So theoretically, you could just X out of the entire editor and close your computer and come back to it when it's done. So theoretically, a cloud-based editor takes like 0% because I could literally click export and then close my computer and come back to it and then just go back and click the download like latest export on the file. So yeah, you guys, those are the main differences. Overall, you have to pick the best option for you. They are incredibly different. It really depends on if you want to do a lot of the processing on your own device or want to outsource that to be online. If you want to use some of these sort of new smart tools, then the online version might be better. But if you want the stability of a traditional video editor, that also makes a lot of sense too because they hardly ever change at all. If you care about collaboration, the online editor is probably the option for you. And if hosting large file sizes on your local device is difficult, then online also can help with that. So yeah, I hope this was helpful to you in helping you decide what editor might be the right one for you. If you're interested in trying out Kapuing, which is the online video editor that I used in this video, make sure to click the first link in the description below. It'll take you over there. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with other experiments and research pieces like this about content creation. I'm always trying something new, so if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.